प्लीज सब्सक्राइब अवर चैनल नॉलेज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर फॉर लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी एंड स्मार्टफोन वीडियो टेक्नोलॉजी वेलकम टू माय आईफोन 7 प्लस वर्सेस माय आईफोन 10R स्पीड टेस्ट लेट्स बिगिन विद अ बूट अप टेस्ट इन 3 2 1 एंड यू कैन सी दैट बोथ ऑफ देम डू हैव प्रीटी मच द सेम अमाउंट ऑफ रैम 3 गीगाबाइट्स ऑफ रैम ऑन द आईफोन 7 प्लस 3 गीगाबाइट्स ऑफ रैम ऑन द आईफोन 10R बट द 10R गिव्स यू एन एप्पल A12 बायोनिक चिपसेट द आईफोन 7 प्लस गिव्स यू एन एप्पल A10 Fusion chipset. Both are very fast because the latest iPad from 2018, the cheaper model, did get the A10 Fusion. So they still believe in that processor as they released it this year. And you've seen the 7 Plus was a little bit ahead of the 10R on the boot up test. Okay, so quickly testing Touch ID versus Face ID. You can see the 7 Plus pretty reliable every time, and you never have to look at it. So very fast when it comes to Touch ID. So. No issues there. Always very quick. Let's test out Face ID. Okay, so testing out Face ID, you can see there it goes again. There it goes. So Face ID is also pretty fast. It's just not faster than Touch ID. I find to go a little bit faster, you can start swiping immediately and just go like that. So pretty fast here on the 10R. I just think that the iPhone 7 Plus's Touch ID is still a little quicker to get into the phone, but the 10R is smoother in that you know it just feels. But the 10R just feels a little more modern, and it's kind of cool that you can authenticate applications with Face ID. Okay, so one thing I want to mention before we get going with the speed portion with the applications is that the iPhone 7 Plus is actually faster to open up these little toggles because 3D Touch is just more responsive than that haptic feedback. So that is actually a slowdown if you're coming from a 7 Plus to a 10R. You probably won't miss it, but it is a slowdown to go to the haptic feedback from the 3D Touch. Let's go to Calendar 3, 2. One, you can see that looked like the 10R was slightly ahead. Let's go into calculator. Now I do want to mention that the 10R coming home has a natural feel, and it kind of is quicker than hitting the home button from the gesture. Let's go into the clock. You can see about the same performance. What about Snapchat? And you can see Snapchat is ahead for the 7 Plus. Now keep in mind that the 10R is not optimizing every app yet because it's a newer phone. 7 Plus wins there on WhatsApp, but we do want to see the 7 Plus at least keep up as it's still in the lineup. And it would be nice to see if it just stays there with the 10R. And so far, it looks like it is doing that. Now, going through Instagram, you can see no, basically no difference here in the everyday performance between these so far. We're getting into third-party apps now. Let's go to YouTube, and let's go to the trending tab, and you can see pretty much similar. So it's really hard to see the differences there on YouTube. Let's come home. Let's go into Prime Video. And see which one can get in there first. Hopefully, we don't get an ad on either. And it looks like the 7 Plus won that one. Let's go ahead and click Jaws, and you could see 10R a little bit ahead. Let's go into Amazon. But you can see right here, it doesn't look like speed is really that much different. So when Apple talks about the A12 Bionic and all that, it is actually faster. But you need to be doing things right now that are taking advantage of it. And most things you're doing right now on your phone definitely are not doing that. So let's go into eBay. And you could see that the 10R was a little bit ahead. It looked like if I was wrong, let me know down below. Couldn't really see that one. What about Slither? And you can see Slither is first for the 10R. And gaming performance, I do have to mention, is better for the 10R. The battery drains less. It's a little bit cooler, more efficient under gaming use, and it's faster to load things. So you want the 10R if you want better gaming. Let's go into Jetpack Joyride. And you can see just like how fast that loaded for the 10R. That was crazy quick. So when you get into more graphically intensive games like Dead Trigger, it's even faster on 10R. So this phone is a beast in performance, but the 7 Plus is no slouch either. It does have the performance you need as well. But you can see the 10R just a little bit more swifter in that performance round. Now when I bought the 7 Plus, it was around the same price as the 10R. So I think the 10R is not. Crazy out of the reach of most consumers, like maybe some of the iPhone XS Maxes are, and you can see that the iPhone XR won here for speed test. So what about Video Shop? And you can see that's the iPhone XR. What about iMovie? You can see that's about the same on both. Let's go into Internet, and you can see Internet pretty similar. So I'm calling it about a draw on this single round. I mean, it's so minuscule, it's so minor. That in your day-to-day -day performance right now, even if you bought an iPhone 7 Plus today, you're going to be happy with the performance. It doesn't really make too much of a difference on the 10R unless you're really into gaming or you're really into, you know, doing some video rendering on here or running like some of those Infinity Blade AR type applications. Then you'll see a little bit better efficiency, performance, and battery life. 
for the iPhone XR. Okay, so I quickly want to run through these applications to see if we get any reloads again here. In multitasking, you can see nothing so far for the 7 Plus. We do have Instagram on the reload. What about YouTube? Nothing. Prime Video with a reload. Amazon. So let's go into eBay. You can see nothing. Slither. Nothing there, it looked like. Paused that on the jetpack and paused the dead trigger. It's all good to go though. Video shop. And remember, iOS 12 here on both video. iMovie did reload and internet. So not bad there for the multitasking 47 plus. What about the iPhone 10R? Like I really like these gestures. It just seems smoother when you're going in and out. And so far the 10R looking like the better performer here in RAM management, definitely so far. Oh yeah. So the 10R is gonna be the better multitasking phone. It did reload iMovie though, and you can see Safari. So a little hiccups here and there on the 7 Plus, just a couple more it looked like than the 10R. So I'm giving the multitasking round to the 10R. Okay guys, so the same 21 second 4K 30 clip here on both from iMovie. We're gonna go ahead and render this out, see which one is quicker, and 4K, 3, 2, 1. See which one can export this first. I will speed it up if it takes too long. But it looks like the 10R is in the lead. I'm going to speed it up. I'll see you when we're at the end of this render. Okay, so we finished. And shockingly, the iPhone 7 Plus has won this video rendering test. Same exact clip. So that was a little surprising. So I guess it's going to take a longer video for you to see the more performance gains. But the iPhone 7 Plus wins here on the 4K30 render clip, showing that it's still a powerhouse performer as well. Okay, so the final Geekbench scores are in, and holy smokes, look at the iPhone XR just kicking the iPhone 7 Plus's booty. Okay, so in conclusion, which one is the better buy here in terms of the speed? And that's gonna be the XR hands down. It's a more competent performer, but you're gonna pay $350 more or so for this device so go ahead and let me know if you guys want to see a full comparison if you should upgrade from the 7 plus to 10 hour down below I'll consider talking about that when making that video and if you guys found this video helpful entertaining enjoying informative